you know, sometimes things happen in your life and you're like, oh my God, how am I going to ever come out of this? Do you know that there are times that even the most faithful of believers forget the power of prayer? Hey, I'm Bishop A. Reginald Littman, host of the Midweek Refill. New Mountaintop Baptist Church is the church that I'm pleased and pleasured to serve. You're watching episode number six of our great little series entitled Finding Peace When Life Spins Out of Control. And in this episode, I'm going to teach you about praying for peace, because sometimes it's not necessarily an answer you need. You just need peace to know God has the answer. Stay tuned. I'll be right back after this. And welcome back to this week's episode. I'm really excited about sharing this particular teaching with you. I want you to make sure that you hit that like button. Make sure you're subscribed. Do share and by all means, leave a comment. It helps us to know what you're thinking. Let us know what speaks to you, what motivates you, what encourages you perhaps to pray more or to really trust and believe God to do something incredible in your life. And don't forget that right down below in the description box is a link to a free workbook. That's right. There's a workbook that goes with this teaching. All you have to do is download it and in it you will find a snapshot of what I'm sharing at this moment for each and every single week. So if you've missed a week prior to week six, go back and watch it all and you can catch up on your reading. But it also has wonderful little precious anecdotes, little stories that will help you to apply the truths of the teaching that we're sharing with you for these weeks and to make some personal applications in your own life as you begin to see God move in your life, build and increase your faith to help you when life spins out of control. So I want you to download that and share this with somebody. Someone you know and love needs to hear an encouraging word to let them know that even when life spins out of control, we as believers still have the power and the practice of prayer. That if we ever really put it into place and ask God for peace, even when we don't see the answer, God will help us to regain control of our emotions even when life spins out of control. And our story tonight is a wonderful, wonderful story from the New Testament that helps us to really see how God can, in fact, move in mysterious ways and do amazing things for us. It comes from the 12th chapter of the book of Acts. Now, as you know, Acts was written by Luke, who is also the author of the Gospel of Luke. And Acts is actually a continuation of the Gospel of Luke. In fact, when you read the first chapter, you'll see uh, where Christ was on the earth for some 40 days or so after his resurrection and how he continued to teach the church. And now the book of Acts would become the book of activities or actions or acts that his disciples, the apostles, now did and taught the church and believers who would come into the fold. And it's in the book of Acts, of course, in that first chapter, verse number eight, that we find the promise of the Holy Ghost coming upon the church, that they would receive power and be witnesses throughout all of their then known world. It's in Acts chapter number two, that the Holy Spirit falls upon the church and on and on and on. So many great little stories in the book of Acts. And Acts is almost like the Genesis of the New Testament, because in it, we really begin to see the New Testament church that Christ left and died for and left in the hands of the apostles 
we begin to really see it grow and burgeon. And so in chapter number 12, verse number six is where I want to talk about tonight. So we find these words. The night before, Herod was to bring him to trial. That's talking about Peter. Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains. And sentries stood guard at the entrance. Now, what's happening here in Acts chapter number 12? Let's just do a little snapshot, if you will, so you get a full gist of what's happening in this chapter. So Peter, with the other Jewish believers, was celebrating at a Jewish festival when King Herod had him arrested and imprisoned. You see, he had sort of set things into motion that were were bad things, if you will, with Herod because he spoke out against Herod's illegitimate lifestyle. And whenever you speak out against sin, you can always look for some kind of retaliation from those who are bothered by the truth. Well, when Peter speaks out against Herod, he has him arrested. And literally, Peter has every legitimate reason on earth to be fearful and skeptical about his outcome. Why? Herod was a maniac. He didn't mind killing his own siblings or wives or anyone else for that matter. And it was nothing for him to decapitate a person. In fact, the night prior, Peter was to meet with Herod he was sleeping soundly. Now here's the gist, here's the power in this amazing story as we're talking about praying for peace. Because Peter has no reason to not fear. But look at what this says. The night before he was supposed to meet with Herod while he was sleeping in the prison, chained up to guards and being watched by about a hundred soldiers, he was a maximum security prisoner he was asleep and sleeping soundly. Now listen to me really good. You may not always get the direct answer that you want when you pray, but we've got to learn how to pray for peace. You see, we often make the mistake of only praying for the answer we want, only praying for God to do things exactly like this, exactly in this order. God moves so-and-so, God brings so-and-so, God give me a this, God do that. And we can often treat God like those who believe in Santa treat him. That is to say that we create a list, leave out some cookies and milk, go to sleep in anticipation of everything on that Christmas wish list being supplied on demand. But my friends, maybe sometimes we should practice praying for peace more than we even pray for provision. Here's why I say that. It's because when we pray for peace, as opposed to praying for just provisions, we're saying, God, I trust you to provide as you said you would. Now, just give me the peace while I wait for the manifestation of your promise to arrive in my life. Is that good or what? How would your spiritual life and spiritual walk with God be different, deeper and better if you learned to pray for peace more than you pray for provisions. I can tell you that if that's something that we apply to our lives, praying for peace in every situation, just for calm, God, give me the patience to wait. God, give me the faith to trust in you because I know you're going to do what you said you're going to do. I'm telling you that will revolutionize your prayer life. When life spins out of control, as it did here with Peter, because Peter again, is about to potentially be destroyed, annihilated, murdered, killed, assassinated. But the night before, he is laying soundly asleep while being chained up to guards and watched by 100 soldiers. Friends, that's the kind of peace that God wants to bring into your life. So when we understand Acts 12, it's important to understand what was happening in the totality of this chapter. We know now Peter was in trouble. We know that Peter had been arrested. We know that Herod was a maniac. And we also know that the night before he was going before Herod, 
He's chained up to two soldiers, watched by a hundred guards, yet he is sound asleep. But here's what I want you to understand about this amazing text. Look again with me at Acts 12 and verse number five. So Peter was kept in prison. Here it is. But the church was earnestly praying to God for him. Oh, wow. You see, when the church prays and believes God to do the impossible, we can experience miracles from heaven. We have to believe God to do the impossible and to bring in our lives what it is that we're trusting him for. Now, that's Acts 12 and 5, that while Peter was in prison, the church was in prayer. There's some big lessons here I don't want you to miss. And that is this, that even when life seems to spin out of control, and it will, you can still find peace through the power of prayer. If you agree with that, type amen in the comments that you can still find peace through the power of prayer. But also, there's another great big lesson here. Your prayers not only have power, they can bring peace to those who are living in the middle of the unknown. How many of you have experienced a situation where you didn't know how it was going to turn out? You didn't know if it was going to turn out. You didn't know what God was going to do or if God was going to do anything. But some way and somehow God in his own powerful and infinite wisdom worked miracles that you could not see coming. But he did it simply because he's God and he's good and he's great. And I'm here to tell you that the same God who has done that before in your life can do that and so much more in your life. But you've got to pray for peace and you've got to believe God to show up in your life. Because even when life spins out of control, you can still find peace through the power of prayer. And your prayers not only have power, they can bring peace to those who are living in the middle of the unknown. And that is so true. So this lesson is for you, my friend. It's for you to practice. It's for you to put into action. Pray for peace. Even if you don't pray for specific provisions, and yes, we are invite, invited to do that by our Lord and Savior. Pray for peace that God would give you the understanding that he will step into your situation, that he will open up the door. You want to be like Peter, not in trouble, but when life spins out of control, you want to be like Peter, able to sleep right through the middle of chaos. I know that's where I want to be, and I want that for you. But we've got to have a faith level that trusts God in spite of what things look like. And we need to be people of prayer like the church was. Because while Peter was in prison, the church was in prayer. So I'll leave you with our key theme verse that we're memorizing, remember, for these weeks together. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Hey, if you got anything at all out of this teaching, I want you to leave a comment down below. I want to go back and check it out and see what it is that speaks to you. What are you motivated to do as a result of hearing the truths of this teaching? Hey, we love you all so much. Make sure whatever you do, do not miss your opportunity to access the free workbook. The description, again, it's down in the description below. You can find the link for it. Go get it. You can go and check out each and every chapter. It's a short read, but it will benefit you and enable you to be able to grow in your faith and to know more and more about him. Hey, I love you so much. Can't wait to share with you in week seven. I'll see you next week. If you haven't seen the previous ones, make sure you go back and check it out and share this. Like it, hit the thumbs up, leave a comment. We love you. God bless you.